tired of wasting time and material on supports? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you one of the creative ways I use manual supports to reduce this wage stitch. Let's go. Okay, so first of all, we're going to hop over into Tinkercad to whip up some shapes that can then be used for this manual support process. If you have never used Tinkercad before, it is a free online CAD resource. And I have also done a tutorial on this topic, so check the link in the corner if you need more help. You can see here, I've just pulled in a few shapes, namely a square, right angle triangle, and a circle then reduce them to 0.6 millimeter thickness, just slightly larger than the diameter of my nozzle. This is so they will be printable with one line. The other dimensions don't matter yet as we can further manipulate them in the slicer when we need to. I'm then going to export each of the shapes individually and I'll rename them in the document window so that I can find them easily later on. When we then have a particular object that we want to be able to support and whichever way you print it, unless you print it on its face, and that might not be possible, is going to be difficult. Rather than having to have an absolute magnitude of supports that run all the way up your inside like that, and a massive amount of waste, which we don't like, what we can do is be a little bit creative with some supports. Now, if I take the triangle, and the square for this operation, what I'm going to do is effectively build a self-supporting support from the base. Now if we work out the size of this, we have got a Y dimension of 68, so we're going to want our support structure to be near about 68, and this is on a 45 degree angle, so we will maintain that, 68. 68. We could get away with a different size slope, but it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to use the block with a, a one millimeter thickness, like so. And we're going to bring this across like that, and a 10 millimeter. So this little section here is just going to attach effectively into the part. We'll actually make this bigger for a second just to make it easier. We'll then take these two shapes together and group them together to make them easier to move and then orientate it so that it's in the correct position to act as the support for the top of the larger part. I've now got to move this support shape up so it's in the right position. I can see that the larger part is about 375 on the Z so we'll just move this support shape up and try and place it perfectly so that it sits just below where that support is going to be needed. Now getting the support shape in the right place can take a little bit of fiddling around. I also like to use the cross-sectional view just to make sure that I am placing it exactly where it needs to be. I'm gonna find the point where this triangle, support triangle, touches into the model and then we wanna move it out from there a millimeter. To be fair, millimeter, probably bigger than it needs to be, so we go for 0.8 of a mil. Okay, so that is just ensuring that this bit here will be attached to the model and we'll have to cut that off afterwards, but this rest of the triangle will be separate from the part and should look nice. See here, it's sticking out plenty distance from the front. To be honest, it doesn't need to be that much, but it doesn't really matter either. It's only gonna be a single line piece. Okay, so you start to see, hopefully, how this is going to work. This is going to act as a support structure for the model on top. Now, in the same way we just separated this side from there, we want to do the same at the top to give it a one layer spacing. At the moment, you can see that it isn't high enough, so we need to lift it up a bit. And again, have it touching into the model. And I like to use the cross-section view just to see where we're at with this. I like to bring the support shape so that it's touching the uppermost part of the model where we're going to need the supports to start from. And once we're confident that we've got it exactly at that point, we can drop it down the spacing of one layer line. In this case, I'm going to be using 0.28 millimeter layers. So I will move this support shape down by 0.28 millimeters. That will be coming down to 3, 3, 4.9. So that's a layer spacing. 
So we've now set up that triangle exactly where we want it to be. Only thing is, we're going to need a lot more of them spread nicely across the model. So I'm now going to duplicate them across the model. We'll do 40. That looks like about the right amount. And then I'll move them across uh, the other way to make sure that they're sitting nicely where we need them. That looks good. And then remove the ones that we're not going to need. Those ones and that one and that one and that one. Same again from the other side. Move that one and that one and that one. Rest it okay. And then the triangles. Okay, so of all that done, you can see we have made ourselves a self-supporting area of support material. Obviously, these squares down the back are going to have to be chopped off, but that should be relatively doable. It will leave a small mark on the back inside of the model, but in this case, it does not matter in the slightest. And to save the large amount of support material and print time, I don't think that 10 minutes of editing was too bad. Let's jump over to the print preview to see how this example is shaping up versus the original supported example. So you can see for this original example where we had a 10% support structure density, we had a 75 hour print time and using this custom support method, we've saved nearly 40% of time and used 780 grams less material. Quite a saving. These triangles, which are being printed with one line. They're attaching in at the bottom and they're coming out like so, acting like the support structure and should print this model fine. Anyway, we will now whack this onto print, see how we get on and hopefully you'll see the benefits of this massive support reduction strategy. So checking back on the print now, when it's nearly at the point of completion you can see it's going nicely support structures have all worked quite well and we're nearly at the point where it's going to start its bridging as it is here and moving across like it would do on top of normal support here we have the part with the finished support my manual made support and standard support on the bottom. You can see a pretty significant amount of area of support material that we've been able to save and obviously resulted in a much better print quality from it. This manual support as well. It does remove pretty easily. And the surface finish is really good. You can see we've actually stepped up two layers there and we've got, like you can barely tell that support material was even there. Win-win. So that's my first example of how you can use support shapes to generate your own manual support material and save yourself a lot of print time and material in the process. I really hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more similar ones to come. So if you did like it, don't forget to smash that like button and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Cheers.